Hello, History Hatters. 36,525 days ago, on a chilly Sunday in Kansas, on January 4, 1920, Nellie Opal Belden graced the world with her presence. Born in Saxman, Kansas, which is located in Rice County, both of her parents, Nelson and Wanda Belden, were also born in the same county. Nellie was the fourth born of seven siblings, and she was just as precious then as she still is today. Here's Nellie at 11 months with her four-year-old sister, Winona. At the age of five, Nellie left the Kansas prairie behind and took to the skies in her very first airplane ride. Yeah, it wasn't very expensive, that's for sure. We made a deal and we got to ride in an aeroplane. <laughs> Maybe only two could ride at a time with the pilot. Getting around back then was very different than today. Here Nellie explains how she used to get to school on a snowy day. Our dad would bundle us up and put us on the pony and we'd go to school, unless it was really cold. I remember the horse we rode was Beauty or Pansy. They were, were a sorrel and white. One time the horse uh, decided that she didn't want us to open the gate. She just tried to jump it. <laughs> Even travel by train wasn't without its challenges. We, we were on a, a train to Chicago and the uh, windows were open and so we got I soot on us, on, on our, our clothing. Growing up, if you wanted to read at night, we had a gasoline lamp. It probably was when I was in junior college that I, we got electricity. We lived near Saxman, Kansas, east of Sterling. Nellie only enjoyed a few short years with her mother, Wanda, as she died giving birth to Nellie's sister, Rowena. And Ernestine and Uncle Mill were ado adopted Rowena. In Wanda's absence, Nellie's father, Nelson, relied heavily on his eldest daughter, Neva, to help raise his family. In 1938, Nellie graduated from Nickerson High School, where her parents were both alumni. Nellie continued her education and moved to Hutchinson, where she attended what today is called Hutchinson Community College, where she studied to become a medical technologist. While in school, Nellie stayed with the president of the, of the junior college. Yeah, and I, I was babysat of their little girl. Nellie worked at St. Francis Hospital in Wichita and specialized in hematology. It wasn't long before Nellie began courting a naval officer, Jean Langston from Hutchison, Kansas. Nellie and Jean married in 1944. Their lives changed forever when Nellie gave birth to her first son, David. David happens to be my father, and then came my uncle, Eddie, and last but not least, my aunt, Julie. Nellie and Jean raised their kids to admire the great outdoors. They hiked in the mountains of nearby Colorado, and Nellie ensured they learned to appreciate every tree, flower, and creature they encountered. While the three siblings formed an excellent trio, they also had ample cousins in Wichita to join in their merriment, from Jean's sister Catherine and his brother Lieb. Family gatherings grew quite large and looked like a lot of fun. These friendships forged permanent bonds that remain today. Outside of Wichita, the kids loved exploring a ranch near Sterling, which belonged to Nellie's sister Myrtle and her husband Dick Wellman. At the Wellman Ranch, the kids took turns riding horses and, well, just enjoyed horsing around. They also enjoyed visiting the family of Nellie's older sister Neva and her husband Leo Massey near Nickerson. After a few years off while raising her children, Nellie returned to the workforce as a medical technologist in 1959. Tragically, after surviving multiple combat missions as a naval fighter pilot, Jean died in a civilian crash in 1961. This loss was felt by all. 
In the wake of this tragedy, Nellie's neighbor, Hal Welch, was about to lose his wife, Phyllis. And she was diabetic all of her life. And then when she died, this was the same year that Jean was killed in an air crash. At that time, why, uh, I had already met Nellie, but because she and Phyllis played bridge together occasionally. And so I knew who she was, but somehow or other, uh, that looked like a good combination. And so a couple of years later, or less than two years, I guess we were married. The families gathered for the occasion when Nellie Opal Langston would become Nellie Opal Welch. Hal instantly gained three teenage children without any clue what he gotten himself into. In the beginning, Nellie's sons David and Eddie didn't give Hal an easy pass as their new stepfather. Nevertheless, Nellie and Hal navigated the situation as best they could and they built a life together in Wichita, which everyone soon called home. Nellie joined Hal's church, Grace Presbyterian, and they made friendships there that continue to span 57 years. Hal worked as an architect, and his passion for art and history fused well with Nellie's love of all things related to Mother Nature. Together, they embarked on adventures to explore the ruins of ancient Greek city-states, the Roman Empire, and some of the world's finest cathedrals. They trekked through the Amazon to spot wildlife and ascended to the Incan citadel of Machu Picchu. They were sometimes joined on their adventures with close friends from Grace Presbyterian Church. This was especially true when Hal and Nellie hit the slopes of Colorado during the winter months. Hal even convinced Nellie to take multiple cross-country road trips on their motorcycle. As David and Eddie grew their families, Nellie discovered a new role as a grandma. Their home was a gathering place for family events and it soon grew well beyond her immediate family. With the loss of her sisters Neva and Myrtle, Nellie and Hal's home became the gathering site for the Masseys and Wellmans as well. Every Thanksgiving, the crowd seemed to grow and grow and grow. Nellie's daughter, Julie, is a multilingual world traveler who always looks forward to coming home for the holidays. Upon retiring in 1985, Nellie began to take care of me full time. I was often joined by my cousin, Julian. We spent a lot of time climbing trees. As far as grandmas go, Nellie is the best. She imbued us with her spirit of adventure, her love of nature and animals, just as she had done for her own children. In addition, Nellie also began to volunteer in various roles through Grace Presbyterian Church. She sorted through donated clothes to sell at a Presbyterian thrift store downtown. She also began to tutor young children who were identified by their teachers as needing additional help in learning how to read. Nellie's roster of students is quite long, as she tutored until 2015. From her beginnings in Saxman, one thing is certain. I lived in Kansas my whole life. Today, on Nellie's 100th birthday, Governor Laura Kelly sent her a letter congratulating her on achieving 100 years of life and denoting that she is an excellent example of the strength and character of a Kansan. As for the rest of it... I can't remember all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs>